What is up, four, five, six all stars and anyone out there in the YouTube world? Thank you so much for watching today, and I'm excited about today's lesson. If you've been tracking, we've been talking about the Israelites, and they just made it into the promised land. They defeated Jericho, they took the land, and God has set them and established them in Israel, and they are excited, right? This is the land that they've been promised and they were excited to get into. Well, today we're going to hear some last words from Joshua, one of Israel's great leaders, um, and hear what he has to say. But before we do that, I want to talk about a coach or a teacher or a band instructor or somebody. We all have people that teach us in our life. And here's the thing. Sometimes we have to do things we don't want to, right? If we're playing sports, sometimes we got to do drills, we got to do conditioning, we've got to do all of these things to help our bodies get better at that, right? The best athletes aren't great unless they are practicing and doing things um, that are really difficult. Or if you're doing music, right, you've got to do scales, you've got to learn to read the music, you've got to practice those songs. Or even in school, if you're learning math or history or science, you've got homework you've got to do, you've got to study and do all of this stuff. And all of this stuff seems like a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo for us sometimes. Sometimes, but the reality is it is something that's making us better, right? It makes us better. When we practice a sport, it makes us better. When we learn and study and read in our school books and learn online, well, it makes us better. When we practice our drills, when we run through our notes, when we do all of that, it makes us better. And that today is what Joshua is calling his people to do. So we're going to be in Joshua chapter 23 and 24 today. So if you've got your Bibles, come and flip on over with me. Um, but today we're going to read some of the words that Joshua has for us. So let's check those out. Joshua 23 verse 6 says, So be very careful to follow everything Moses wrote in the book of instructions. Do not deviate from it, turning to either the right or to the left. And then if we jump down to verse 9, it says, For the Lord has driven out great powerful nations for you, and no one yet has been able to defeat you. Each one of you will put to flight a thousand of the enemy, for the Lord your God fights for you just as he promised. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. So this is Joshua, and he's on his deathbed. He's going to die. He's 110 years old, and he's been leading the people of Israel well. You see, Joshua understood obedience. He got the people to obey as they crossed the Jordan, as they marched around Jericho, and as they defeated the enemies um, all around them. Joshua got them to obey. And Joshua understood obedience. And just like with um, a sport or with a schoolwork or with your music or whatever it is that you enjoy, you probably have to work hard at it. The same is with our relationship with God. You see, it's not just a simple, all right, I, I, I read the Bible and I'm done, right? It also requires obedience and obedience requires effort. And we have to know what God calls us to do. You see, Joshua is calling the people of Israel to go beyond just understanding the book, but also obeying it and trusting the God who the book is about, right? The Bible is one big story about who God is. And when we trust who God is, and we obey him because we trust him, we obey. And because we obey, we grow closer with him, right? All of these things are difficult, right? And not always fun, right? It's a lot more fun to uh, be cool with your friends and like make fun of that, that one kid at the lunch table. But so what God calls us to do? No. Sometimes it's the harder choice. Sometimes it's standing up for what we know is right um, or really digging your heels in and actually cleaning your room instead of avoiding it or, or or your sibling says something unkind to you and instead of saying something unkind back or just hating them you decide to walk away or say something kind back right all of these are really hard choices and they're not the choices we want to make at first but god calls us to obey you see, the people of Israel swore a covenant, and, and Joshua told the people, hey, if you obey God, he will be with you, but if you disobey, he will not. Um, and ultimately, as we read the story, we get to see what the people of Israel choose. But guys, when we follow God and his commands, it might not be the easiest choice, but I promise you it is the best. Just like choosing to practice your drills over video games or choosing to um, do a few more sets of your scales over reading a book, whatever it is, um, when we choose to obey God and we choose the hard choice, he will reward us for that. It may not be the easy choice, but it is a choice that will come with many 
many benefits. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see the full story, you can check that out after this video. If not, I'm going to see you guys next week. I hope you have a wonderful week and that you guys practice obeying the Lord and choosing some of the harder choices because it will always, always, always turn out better for you in the end. Bye guys. Many years had passed since Joshua and the Israelites had defeated Jericho, Ai, and the kings of the land. God had allowed the Israelites to rest from battles against their enemies. Now Joshua was getting old. He gathered all the people of Israel because he had some important things to say to them. Joshua said, you have seen everything the Lord your God has done. He has fought your battles for you. The rest of the land will be yours too, just as the Lord your God promised. Therefore, Joshua continued, be careful to obey everything that is in the book of the law of Moses. Do not turn aside from it. Do not mix with the nations in this land or worship their gods. Keep clinging to God. He fights for you. So love the Lord your God. And if you disobey God, he will no longer help you win these battles. In fact, you will die here if you disobey him. Joshua reminded the people about the things God had done in the past. God had called Abraham and had given him a son, Isaac. He had given Isaac two sons, Jacob and Esau. Jacob's children had become slaves in Egypt, where God had sent Moses and Aaron. God had rescued the Israelites from the Egyptians, bringing them safely across the Red Sea. They had fought and won many battles because God was fighting for them. God had done so many great things for his people. So Joshua commanded the people, Fear the Lord and worship him, or will you worship false gods? As for me and my family, we will worship the Lord. The people replied, we will not abandon the Lord. We know how much God has done for us and we love him. Joshua warned the people, if you do abandon God to worship other gods, God will turn against you. He will destroy you. No, the people replied, we will worship the Lord. On that day, Joshua made a covenant with the people. He wrote it down and also set up a large stone under an oak tree. Joshua said, this stone will be a reminder of your duty to serve the Lord who kept every promise in bringing you into this land. Then Joshua sent the people back to their homes. After that, Joshua died. He was 110 years old. As Joshua prepared for his own death, he left behind a legacy of obedience to God. And after Jesus' death and resurrection, he appeared to the disciples and left them with a legacy too, to obey him by making disciples of all nations.